Did I, did I do that right? Is that how that's done? I have no idea. Episode seven, thought I'd be done by now. Seven episodes, dang. This episode, we're gonna get this neck into the body. I drew up a headstock today. I was gonna do like a Martin style, but I decided I really like the slotted ones on the resonator. So I'm gonna cut that out. I gotta glue some wings onto here. I'm gonna veneer it on both sides with some, you know, a thin white. Anyway, I'm trying to make that a little fancy. Uh, what else are we gonna do? Oh, I am going to make a test piece to, to bend the back of the back. <laughs> Is that what I meant? Yeah. You know how on an acoustic guitar you use the radius dish to get the radius on the back? Well, I want something similar on the back of this. I don't want it to be flat. I don't want it to do any oil canning. I'm going to carve out a fixture to just do a test piece to press the back and get that curve nicely in it. So I want to test that. That'll take me a little bit to probably build the test fixture. And then if that's successful and I don't get any, you're crazy, this is a much easier way to do it, then I will build the full scale one where I bend the backs. I'm going to share my CAD file with you again because I made a bunch of changes to it today. Uh, there's a couple little things I just wanted to do different. Uh, the F-holes in particular. I'm sure we'll test a bunch of other stuff along the way. I don't know what else we're going to do in this episode, but that's a pretty good start. Get the neck in and fitting, get the peg head all built and done. Yeah, let's get it done. Here we go. I just cut that pattern out and you can see we're going to need some ears on here. So I've got all of these scrap pieces set aside so I can try and find some wood that matches. Although. I don't think it even matters that it matches because it's going to end up with a veneer that's got a stripe in it and other stuff. So, yeah. Okay, let's get some ears glued onto this thing and then we can move on. Okay, while that dries, I can make a veneer um, out of this piece for the top and the back. I'm going to rip just a really thin veneer off of here. I'm going to also rip some really thin veneer off this maple, which is already kind of thin, but I'm going to make it thinner. That's what's next, making some veneers.
Well, I've got the ears glued on. They're way, way bigger than they need to be. I've got my center line. Um, I've got my headstock thing ready to go. And what I'm going to do is put some of the spray adhesive on this headstock and then carefully, carefully get this in place on it. And then we'll start to shape that headstock up. It's really not hard. Here goes. <laughs> Okay, that gets me to a spot where I can do the put the veneers on. I think when I put the veneer on the back, it's going to go down. I'm actually going to bend it, and then it's going to have that volute. It's probably not a volute. I don't know what it's called, but the little bump, you know, that kind of reinforces. I think it's going to look pretty cool. Uh, anyway, you'll see that soon. I'm ready to narrow down the part of the neck that goes through the body. I'm going to start with an inch and a half, and then I may decide that that just feels a little fat. We'll see. Maybe I think it'll be just right. I don't know. Okay, let's rip this thing down, see how that goes. I got those cut off of there. That went pretty smoothly. These are the two pieces that came off of there. Actually, that's a really nice piece. Okay, now we just gotta wait for the veneer to finish gluing and we can put the veneers on here and then we can start finishing up the way this neck, neck is shaped. Okay, the glue up went really, really well on the veneer. Looks about like that. It's gonna get just glued onto the headstock there. So here goes the glue up for this. I'm waiting for glue to dry, so now's as good a time as any to look at that CAD file and the changes I made. I'm the only one waiting for glue to dry, not you. You're just watching a video, but whatever. We're going to go to the CAD file now. I wanted to just make a couple small tweaks to my CAD file for the next version of laser cut stuff. I want to give an option of having a slotted headstock versus like a kind of a Martin style type headstock. I think I really like the slotted version on the resonator for some reason, it just, I just like it. I wanted to make my own F holes. I went through, you wouldn't believe, look at all these F hole options I went through for landing on I think this one here. Here you can see this one's got, you know, sharp corners, this one has rounded, but they're the same. This one just completely different. This one's similar to those, but doesn't have the little section in the middle. This one, the section in the middle is wider and it's square up here. I mean, I went through so many iterations of these, trying to come up with something I liked. I kind of, I was on this one for a little while. I, I really like this one. That looks similar. Oh, I think they're just rotated different. Yeah, this has got an angle. This one, less of an angle. Uh, that's pretty much kind of what I'm using. This, that's pretty cool, but it's got rounded instead of the flat, like the one I'm using. <laughs> Look at this, that's ridiculous. I uh, don't want that. Oh, some changes I'm making to what I'm going to send for the next laser um, version. So this has the new F holes and then I I made these uh, bend over tabs way shorter. So if you look, here's where I was working on it. The old bend over tabs came all the way out to here. Whereas the new bend over tabs, they're about a quarter of an inch shorter. So they used to be a half inch, I'm going down to quarter. And then 
I, I got that bead roller so I can roll the bottom edge of the sound well, but I think I still want the bend over tabs on the top of it where it attaches to the top. So I'm gonna actually get that thing laser cut instead of me cutting it with the cutoff wheel because it's gonna be way more accurate and straight and perfect. Um, I added a couple little dimples on the sound well hole. If I don't like them, I can always just sand them off, but it makes it a whole lot easier to find the center point of this thing if I add those little dimples. I've also changed up how these two tabs at the ends go so that I can find the center point there and there easily. I was having trouble keeping track of the center line and I think this is going to make it a lot easier having this. That's just a couple small minor changes and improvements. Okay, moving on. Glue's dry, let's go. That went nicely for the top. Now the issue I'm gonna ha I have is I need to bend this one. I'm thinking I can probably bend it with just the regular pipe bender. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see how that goes. What do we got to lose? Well, that's a little on the thick side to get it to bend like that. That's just too much. So I'm going to put it in the press and apply some heat to the pipe that way and see if I can get this to bend in the press without breaking it. We'll see. Maybe I break it. <laughs> Okay, I got that veneer that I bent on the press onto the neck. I didn't film that operation because I wanted to get it clamped up before that thing fully cooled and was super stiff and hard to clamp into shape and form. It looks like it's gone well. I think it's going to come out okay. It's going to need a lot of sanding because that pipe sure got hot. But that's okay. I might be a little on the thick side anyway right now. I always build everything a little oversized and then tweak as ne as needed. When you try and build to the exact tolerance and then you, you know, you got no wiggle room. So, well, I got some updates. You guys probably had your doubts on that shop press with the propane and the pipe bending the wood like that. You know, Fender Custom Shops, you know, they're calling all the time, but I keep telling them, man, I, I'm busy. I got stuff going on around here. I haven't, obviously this is gonna get rounded when the neck gets carved and all of that. I guess if I was doing it all over again, I might make these maple ones just a little thinner. Okay, let's redo it and make those thinner. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I mean, maybe. Um, I'm starting to think about the fretboard. I've got this piece of ebony here. Um, I'm gonna have to be very specific about how I cut that out so that I get all that coolness in there. I didn't want a super shouty, you know, hey, look at me fretboard. Um, I wanted something kind of subtle, and this to me is pretty subtle. So I think that's going to be a nice fretboard on there. Probably Kip put the cool part of it on the base side, and then the treble side is going to be a little bit more plain. Let's glue this template on, and let's start doing this peg head. All right, I didn't drill them all the way through yet. The reason I don't drill them all the way through is you don't want it blowing out on the backside. Like if you just drill all the way through with that Forzner bit, sometimes you'll get tear out back here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a smaller bit in the drill press and I'm gonna use the point that the Forzner bit made in the bottom of these holes to put a pilot hole through and then I'll come from the other way with that same Forzner bit. And that way, no chance of any blowout or any kind of chaos. Here we go.
Yep, that was perfect. That gives me no tear out um, both sides, so this side looks good. I've had enough peg head for a little bit. All right, it's a new day and it's time to just bite the bullet and cut the hole in the body for the neck. I'm a little nervous about it. I don't know why, I just a little bit am because if I screw it up now, well, you know what happens, we gotta start over and I don't wanna start over. I don't have any super fancy tools to do this hole. I thought about using the cutoff wheel on my Dremel, but I thought that would also take me another two or three new days. So I decided not to do that. I'm just gonna cut off wheel it. I'm pretty good with it. I, I wish they had cut off wheel Olympics or something cause I might actually be able to compete. Let's cut a hole in the body and hope the neck fits in that hole. I mean, what could go wrong? How hard could it be? How hard could it be? Yeah, I was super nervous about that maneuver. Came out good. Little pop those out of there and a little cleanup work. I think that'll be a nice opening for the neck. I think we're ready to try and see if the neck will fit in there. Here, let's grab it. Okay, moment of truth. Oh, look at that, it fit the first time. Did I just sand it for 20 minutes to make sure it fit? Yes, yes I did do that. That's not the first time. It didn't fit the first time, but darn it fits an awful good now. Now I gotta get a notch in it for the sound well and try and get it all the way in there. There's a neck in there. None of that was as hard as I was kind of making it out to be in my mind. I was kind of stressed about it. Not stressed, but like, I just felt like, yeah, okay, I could really screw this all up, but it turned out great. It turned out no problem. So lots of fitment to do with the heel here. I haven't tapered this yet because I'm gonna put some carbon fiber rods in there. If you put a truss rod in it, it would have to be some sort of, you know, I guess you'd have to have a little heel plate thing here or whatever to adjust it because you wouldn't be able to get it to come out anywhere because this neck where the neck goes through here it sits you know it's it's tight on the body all the way up through here so there's really nowhere you would access a truss rod anyway i don't even know if my i had a national style o for a while i don't remember if it had a truss rod or not that was 25 years ago um, anyway this one's not going to have a truss rod it's going to have carbon fiber rods in the neck and i think that will do it just fine I'm going to let my mind rest on that progress right there and I'm going to start thinking about putting a dish on the back. Can I put a dish on the back? I have no idea. Let's find out. All right, it's a new day out here and I'm starting to think ahead about the back of this guitar and how I want it to be. And ideally, I want it to have a, a dish to it, kind of like an acoustic where it's it's curved across the back and I want a flat back. I, I was originally thinking I would just put a bead roll all the way around it, but I don't want that either. I don't mind the bead roll all the way around the edge, but I do want the back to be dished. Can I do that? I have no idea. I've been trying to find videos on how you might do that without hammer forming it, because hammer forming is gonna make a pretty, pretty gnarly surface to get smooth again. And so I don't know if I wanna hammer form it. I, I guess I'm just gonna try and press a dish into it. And so I'm gonna make two different little molds. I don't know what to call them, molds, bucks, whatever. They're just going to be round with a flat edge and one will have a dish in it and the other one will have a crown on it and it'll smash the sheet metal in between the two and it'll have a flat lip around the edge like the back of the guitar needs to have. I'm going to do this on a small scale and see 
Do I even get close? Do I get any kind of result I want? I don't know. So this is what I'm making. Um, I've got the two circles laid out on here. Um, I'll dish this one and then this one I'll crown and try and get a flat edge around this one that meets this edge and the crowns to match. Whether I can do that or not is a whole nother story. Okay, there's the first one for putting a curved stamp in sheet metal. It's not perfect, but this is just a test. It doesn't need to be perfect. So now I got to make the inverse of that and see if I can make it match. Okay, I brought my press over from the chaos side of the shop, which you guys never see, to the chaos side of the shop, which you guys see all the time. There's the bottom one, so that's the dished one. Here's the opposite to it, and it sits in here. And in between that, we're gonna put this plate. So this is even thicker than what the sides are. I'm using 20 gauge. I mean, for the back and the top, I'm using 20 gauge. This is 18 gauge, so it's even thicker. So this is going to be a good test to see what happens here. I, I have no idea. You guys that know are probably laughing at me already, but whatever. Well, that actually worked. I can't believe it. It's dished. And it's dished smoothly. And I think the edges could be hammered flat. Actually, they're still pretty flat. Okay, so if I make a if I make a form to press the backs, is that what I want to do? It doesn't oil cam. Oh, that's awesome. It doesn't even oil cam. Did I did I do that right? Is that how that's done? I have no idea. Well, let's wrap that episode here. Hopefully you guys will tell me, am I crazy for trying to just press a curve into the back? Because it's gonna take me forever to make this mold. So if it's just a waste of time and it's never going to work and it's a dumb idea, somebody help me. I'm pretty confident now that this is definitely going to become a playable guitar. I don't know if this guitar is going to be amazing and set the world on fire, but it's at least going to be a playable guitar. And I'm going to give the Chinese companies a run for their money with this one, I think. At least, at least the Chinese companies. National, I'm coming for you soon, but it ain't happening right now. It took me 20 years to really dial in building guitars out of wood. I don't expect my first one out of metal to be incredible. And this is just how I go about it. I hack away at it until I figure it out and I learn what does and doesn't work. I like that I'm doing this one on YouTube because a bunch of people are helping me and giving me some great comments. That's been a big help for me. Really appreciate that. Okay, thanks for watching.